Hello, my name is Christian Barnick and I'm a consultant at OBGYN Matters in central London. A lot of women these days are coming forward asking about hormone replacement therapy as it seems to be something that's very much in the public eye. It's interesting how over the last few years opinions on hormone replacement therapy and the menopause have changed so much it used to be a bit of a laughing matter that women suffered from hot flushes and sweats when they got to a certain age. And perhaps this was part of a rather patronising view that the medical profession had about women and women's issues. And this has certainly changed. And we now understand that the menopause is a really serious problem for a lot of women. And because of this, they might be considering hormone replacement therapy, or HRT. Many of you may have heard about this. But what essentially happens is, is that when you get to a certain age, your ovaries start to not function as well as they once did. Uh, and this age will vary from one woman to another, but normally occurs at the age of around 51 to 52. So this is the menopause itself. But leading up to that time, women suffer from perimenopausal symptoms, which are very similar, and we in the medical profession call this the climacteric. And even during this stage of women's reproductive career, they might want to take hormone replacement therapy. The hormones that we normally give women when we're thinking about hormone replacement therapy are estrogen and progesterone. The hormone we want to give is the estrogen because it's the lack of the estrogen that causes most of the symptoms that women suffer from. And we can give this estrogen in many different ways. These days, we like to use bioidentical hormones, uh, or hormones that are exactly the same as the ones that are made in your body. And these are easily accessible and are mostly given via the transdermal route. So you apply them to the skin, and that can either be a, a patch, a gel, or even a spray. And individual women will make different choices about which type of treatment they'd like to use. The great benefit in using this transdermal approach is not only that we can use bioidentical hormones, but also that we can avoid the first pass liver metabolism that happens if we take things orally. And this can reduce the sort of effects that the HRT can have on the liver itself, which perhaps leads to a slight risk in blood clotting. So if we give the HRT via the transdermal route, this doesn't happen. And, and it makes the HRT even safer. Now, as well as giving the estrogen, we also need to give progesterone to protect the lining of the womb. If we give estrogen on its own, then the lining of the womb can become excessively thick and even overactive, and this can be quite dangerous. So we have to give progesterone at the same time. And if we do this, then it's completely safe from the perspective of the womb. Now, women will think, well, what happens if I take the hormone replacement therapy for a long time? Does it increase my risks of anything? And there's a lot of talk about the possible increased risk of breast cancer with estrogen hormone replacement therapy. It's very difficult to know exactly what to make of the evidence that's out there. But the way I would look at it is that, of course, some breast cancers are estrogen responsive and receptive. And so if you're taking estrogen, or you've got estrogen in your body for a greater proportion of your life, then inevitably the risk of those rare estrogen-dependent tumours will increase slightly. But the increased risk is quite small. And it's important to keep this in perspective. Approximately 4% of women die from breast cancer. So a small increased risk in this doesn't actually represent a large number of women. Whereas we know that hormone replacement therapy can be protected against heart disease, which affects and kills 36% of women. So a small benefit there will have a much bigger effect than a small detrimental effect on breast cancer. But of course, it isn't quite such an emotive subject. Overall, when we look at deaths in people taking hormone replacement therapy, or women not taking hormone replacement therapy, we see that slightly fewer people are dying in the women who are taking the hormone, uh, hormones in the way of estrogen and progesterone. So if anything, 
it slightly increase, decreases your chances of dying. Women will also ask me, well, do I need to take hormone replacement therapy? Well, the answer is you don't have to take it. It's not mandatory to do so. You should really only take it if you're having symptoms. Uh, and this is the majority of women, unfortunately. And the symptoms that women get are mostly hot flushes and sweats, which are well, well described. But they also have difficulty sleeping, and this leads to brain fog and irritability and difficulty coping in the workplace, uh, and can be really very unpleasant. If you're one of those sufferers, well then, taking hormone replacement therapy really is something you should consider. It's so easy to do, and so safe. The next thing, of course, then is if you're taking hormone replacement therapy, when do you stop? Uh, and this is something that women often ask me, and I don't have an answer to that. I think that's a personal choice. I think largely women will take hormone replacement therapy for about 10 years, which takes you up to your mid 60s. And then at some point you might consider that actually you had enough and you don't really want to continue. But be warned because inevitably, once you stop taking the hormones, the menopausal symptoms will occur at whatever age that is. Um, and that can be a little bit surprising for a lot of women. So once you start it, you take it for a long period of time. But of course, you, you don't know whether it's going to suit you or not, and, and you can always stop. So if you're concerned about taking hormone replacement therapy, and you're thinking, is it going to be right for you? Are you at any particular increased risk? Then go along and see a healthcare practitioner, speak to them about it, and give it some careful thought. And ultimately, of course, you can always try it, and, and if you don't like it, you can stop again. So it really isn't that big a deal to give it a go and see if it can really have the very positive effect on your life that it does on um, so many other women around that time. It's been a pleasure talking to you and uh, please do come and see us if we can be of any assistance.